I can record. Uh, uh, yeah. Ooh. So, okay. yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, it just helped. And yeah, thanks again for doing this session, Angelic and everyone, because it's so much appreciated. Um, okay, straight to the point. So what are we talking about? The terminology is about changing uh, how we name the things in the Jenkins ecosystem overall. So um, the first one is, yes, we call it uh, a Jenkins instance a master. Now it's a controller and that's easy, right? Uh, just change it everywhere. But no, no, um, not that easy. There is in some cases, it's the built-in node when we are talking about the node Jenkins as a node itself. And there is also so the, the Git in the Git world, the master branch. So in the community, um, there is an agreement about calling it the default branch when it's about Git. There is also the word that uh, we try to remove that the community try to change since many years that is still there in here and there it's agent slave that goes to agent and there is also the whitelist and blacklist that now um, the default naming is a low list and deny list but as we have so them in the code most of time you can adapt to the context for example, once it was about filtering something. So I think we called it filter, filter, uh, filter and list or something like that. So whitelist or black, blacklist usually can be changed to something very um, contextual. And that's all. And no, that's not all because <laughs> terminology is also on the UI. So it's also about uh, what are the words in the other language for everything, uh, all of this world. And it's mainly also for plugin maintainer. I have a pull request with someone changing words in Chinese, in Russian, in French. What do I accept or not? Is it the, <laughs> is it the right term or the bad term? So it's, it's something that, uh, uh, that touched a, a lot of a lot of words overall in, in Jenkins at the end. Any remark, question so far or suggestion? Yes, so one comment uh, that uh, sometimes it's not now to say master to controller because there are also sub terms. I'm not sure whether you will be talking about that, uh, but yeah, it increases mm -hmm. complexity, especially for user documentation, uh, which have uh, so many underlying terms. And uh, another issue we discovered when we were working on uh, terminology, that some languages, like for example, French or Russian, they also have genders. And sometimes uh, if you want to build the inclusive language, uh, English doesn't have genders uh, in general. So it's easier, but when you start uh, switching to languages, you discover that particular terms uh, may be actually non-inclusive uh, in target languages and you have to come up with an approach. Uh, so yeah. Uh, we found an approach for French, for Russian, based on uh, practice of use, uh, because it's not uh, the only use case like that. But uh, yeah, there are a lot of hidden stones uh, when you start talking about languages. Yes, and also for some languages, I, I, if I want to remove, for example, slave on all languages, I don't know what is the word is in the other language. So I, I cannot do a GitHub search right now. Um, because I, I don't know all the possibility in our language. So we had several discussion in the, I, I have put some link at the end. So we, we will go to, uh, with all the, the document and links and places and discussion and how. Oh. <laughs> tu, tu me donnes cinq minutes, s'il te plaît, je viens te voir après. Sorry. <laughs> Um, ferm. Okay. This is Murphy Law. The five minutes you are talking, all the all the homies is coming in the room. So.
Okay, sorry. <laughs> no worries. Back to <laughs> back to the scope. So yes, uh, but what do we change? The first idea is about the user interface because it's highly visible. It's the first thing uh, the end user saw, and it, there is very few backward compatibility issue. Mainly, it's about changing some the same word in some tests that we are using the word to verify something. Um, so it's a very good starting point, and there is a lot uh, of contributors that have started do, do, doing these changes uh, on the UI. There is also the the, the console the log, so both the job build console and, and the log, it's quite visible still for end user. Um, and it's, it's often some string, so it's quite the same. It's only uh, the backward com compatibility. It's, it's only about changing, updating some text on test. But there is also some uh, troubleshooting tools that may uh, grab some log or something like that to detect some uh, behavior. So this is also where the uh, backward compatibility can be uh, a bit adapted. Then there is the documentation part. So I, I didn't look much at the Jenkins IO documentation. I, I think it's quite up to date. Um, but there is also plugin documentation like Markdown file, the README. It's it depends on what you consider the user is. But if you consider that a developer that is using the plugin is the user, then it's fairly visible uh, for this kind of user too. Um, there is also the code command. So when we did we try to, to, to update, we began to just do the UI text, but uh, by doing also the change in the code command, you lower the, the, you make it easy to search if there is still some uh, term that you want to change that remain in the code. So uh, we, I saw, and I saw that a lot of contributors are, are changing uh, commands also because it's more handy for um, the flowing. Then there is some um, uh, nearly code, but it's something that is generated from codes, like the configuration as code. So you can have some term that ends up on the YAML uh, because it's a viab name on the code or the pack or the, the the class name. So it, it's quite visible, and the good the good news is that by using um, the annotation symbol. Um, it should be easy to keep both the old term and the new term for a while before uh, changing in completely. So you can have the backward compatibility. Uh, for the Jenkins CLI, um, it's quite similar. Uh, there is maybe some Jenkins CLI with the term that we want to change. I also have in mind that maybe tomorrow there will be some other term that we wanted to change. I don't have any in mind right now, but it's it's about the, the overall process. Um, it's mainly, I think, visible to people that administrate the controller. So, and the backward compatibility can be keep by deprecating the old CLI name and having both the new and the whole name in the same time and then after a while uh, removing the deprecated one. And change log, there, there, there have been a discussion in Google, uh, in the Google group. Um, I'm not sure that there is an agreement uh, maybe I missed the, the right uh, meeting on that. Um, so it's m mostly the release, not, not, not the git change log, because some people ask. It's about the release not of, of the plugin, for example, if there is a release not that is five years old with old terminology, do we change them or not? Do we change the past or not? It's something that is not um, 
decide yet, I think. And there is also uh, more and more uh, system property. Um, usually, some system property are, are used as workarounds, so should be less used, but uh, often the package name is used. And if it package name, you have some term that we want to change, then the, the term appears on the system property. Um, I don't have um, a methodology uh, yet in mind. Uh, maybe we'll come with discussion. And for HTTP endpoints, like uh, requests to update, to, to, to ask some data from Jenkins and uh, the URL in the browser, it seems to be something that we need to look at one by one. I'm not sure. Um, there is a, a generic way for that. And the last one is the code itself, uh, the last part. <coughs> so the package name, the Java API. There is a lot of backward <laughs> compatibility issues. So I think it's the, the part that most people keep for later, for now. And this is the, the link. Uh, so I think that now the main entry point is the, the post that Oleg did on um, this course. Um, most of link are, are inside and most information, there is a lot of information here. Um, and I will be happy to see uh, these slides also embedded on this page because they are awesome. So thanks a lot, Angelic, for preparing yes, this yes, update. Yes, I wish I them. <laughs> uh, there is this uh, GitHub project page that I really like, that Oleg did also. And um, you can see if there is some uh, open pull request or um, I think it must or pull request. And the work that has been done so far, you, you see on the done column, there is a, a, a lot of contribution and it, that's really great to see uh, so many contributions. Great question, Angelique. Uh, yes. uh, has any thought been given to the Xtreme, names in Xtreme? Because you touched on the classes, but Xtreme is distinct from the classes. I don't know if people uh, read the XML and would get offended by seeing a class name, something slave in there or not, but we they can don't. alias. So we can alias um, a foobar slave to foobar agent, even though the class name is still foobar slave using Xtreme. Okay, you mean for configuration file, for example? Uh, yeah, the actual the actual things that are on disk, uh, the raw XML. That if you went to the, if you weren't using okay. Confix code, you were just using the Jenkins UI and you hit save. I suppose it would anyway be at least related to the class names, James. You know, and their persistence. No, uh, no, you you can you can change what something is serialized as without changing the class itself by adding an alias and say mm -hmm. I want I want to save the I want to save Bob as Fred and Fred demarshals to Bob. So in the XML, Fred is always Bob, but in code, it's always Fred. It it kind of helps move things forward in the fact that people won't complain about the XML contains offensive language but it removes the mapping that this maps to this class. So it's easy to find out what something is doing. I would imagine that in, in ideally the things would be kind of migrated. You know, well, there are like slave it, on the disk, uh, you rename the class, you put the alias. It's understanding that, you know, it was previously yeah, named yeah. blah slave. But, it's loading but, and saving at blah. But agent. you can't change the class name in the actual Java code 
without fixing all the usages of that class. Sure. I mean, you that's, can change that's... the alias, what it's persisted at, without changing the class name. Yeah, sure. But we know that it's already a big problem and big difficulty. That's the last uh, box in the, in the slide right now, right? No, I, I, I'm trying to say there's a there's an intermediate potential. There's a, an mm -hmm. intermediary part that could be done um, that you, you can change the persistence format without changing any of the Java code. Oh, apart, yeah, I thought you were... The alias. Okay, yeah, yeah, I get it. I get it, yeah. So you're saying, you know, if we think that, you know, changing class names is a is a mess and very, very tricky, which I, I can kind of agree with. Uh, just at least changing for now immediately, more immediately, more soon, the serialization format is a potential intermediate to say. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And there is another point that is not in the slides, that is the, the repository names. And some, uh, yes. at least one repository contains uh, one of the, the the words that we want to remove. At least one. I don't know if there are. More. Oh, there's also plugin names as well. It's yeah, it's, it's the same. It's related often. Uh, yeah, plugin names uh, the most complicated part because it requires very serious work. I have some way mini design for that. Uh, I'm not sure whether it's shared it in public or only within CloudBees. Uh, but uh, yeah, renaming plugin uh, artifact ID is so complex. That I don't know. The vast majority. Plugin, pl changing uh, well, uh, plugin IDs is very simple. If you create a new plugin, move all the code from the old plugin to the new plugin. And just depend on the new plugin from the old yeah. plugin. This is just a bit uh, tricky to manage, but it's it, it's it's a pain, but it's relatively yeah. trivial. And then all you have to do is anyone that's depending on old plugin, yep. they need depending. to start depending on new plugin instead. And jobs are good. Yeah, yeah. And it's been done countless yeah, it times. Yeah, it's also noted as one of the easiest way in my dog. There are still concerns, for example, for configuration as code, etc., because it will likely become a source of mess unless you use full bill of materials. But, <coughs> sorry, but still it's, it seems to be the easiest way. No, uh, and maybe, so for SSH built agents, it would be an excuse, for example, to redesign the plugin a bit. For uh, Windows agents, I will be happy to re release to do zero and probably fork the code uh, or maybe just deprecate the plugin, to be honest, uh, unless uh, there is a main thing here. So yeah, this approach is easy, but it also it's also quite complicated in terms of user impact. Uh, we shouldn't uh, be thinking about classic Jenkins use cases. We should be thinking about configuration as code uh, these days. Oh, nearly in time. I have five minutes. <laughs> um, maybe what I want to discuss is this. Uh, I I was trying to have uh, a table with all. Uh, sorry, I have the Zoom widget on top of my browser. Yeah, so I I was looking a way to have all all the world at one table to be able to uh, to look at them easily, find them easily, and so I, I started a chap thinking it was a specification, but and I have no strong opinion, but maybe it could be also on the documentation on Jenkins IO. I don't know what do you think about this part. I think that uh, since you have started a uh, job, you should rather finish it. Okay. Because, uh, yeah, moving from one format to another is overhead. And while this story doesn't necessarily require a job, uh, it uh, raises the profile of this story a bit. And in this case, I don't see a problem. 
what I wanted is to have Git history because I think it's interesting to see when a new term has been added or uh, if there is some discussion on one translation maybe. You know, it might make sense to, for the JEP here, this is a regional start, but for the JEP to be a, a point to another repository that actually tracks the, the uh, like a Jenkins CI uh, terminology, a, a, a approved terminology repository that actually does this separately. So that way it can be maintained uh, separately from the JEP process. It's like, look, that we have this process and it's, and, and it, that could also be where we would maintain a, uh, some automated tool that does, uh, that does scanning over, over Jenkins, the Jenkins repository or, or other things like that. Right. Um, because I, I think in the long run, we would want this to be something we, where we do automate yeah. it to a significant degree. Right. At which we point. Could, yeah. We could automatically detect this word in PR, for example. I don't know. I don't have a tool in mind, but I'm sure that it's possible. And in it's, PRs, it's in point. commits. Yeah. Yes. Well, we can uh, process a ski doc as well as a source of information. So it wouldn't be a blocker, uh, even if we wanted to put it as is. So in my Interesting. case- Interesting, okay, you'd work. use the ASCII doc as the source of truth? Well, ASCII doc is machine readable. So- Fair enough, uh, okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, it might be not the easiest. So in my case, I would just advise to not over design because yeah, it's awesome to think about all these tools, uh, but uh, at the same time, I would rather let people uh, focus on actually cleaning up uh, terminology than investing too much time in the process at the moment. Uh, so yeah, that's why I am basically happy with whatever approach, uh, just to enable others uh, to proceed with the changes and uh, to synthesize these changes in any feasible way. Yeah, and I can actually see that, uh, like you said, putting it in the JEP means that it is like so a first first class citizen of of yep. the the project as a whole. That that the terminology we, that we use is this is the, this is our terminology. It's managed the same way that all the other sort of JEP level things are. It's a design level choice that's uh, project wide and that we can reason over in the same way. I was thinking also about maintainer, you know, if there's so some PR about French language and you're not speaking French, do I accept or not this PR? Having this table make it easy, I think. So Certainly. Yep. Yeah, what we uh, could do, uh, maybe you could just uh, put a recommended three viewers just to this table as one of the options. Uh, other option, maybe we could standardize it a bit uh, because we had a discussion about official localization partners a while ago. For example, there was a uh, company in Russia which translated the entire Blue Ocean to Russian. Uh, and we were thinking about more making uh, this translation uh, maintainers uh, more or less official, but it was always somewhere in, not on the top of our priority list. But for this particular job, for example, for German translate, for French translation, uh, it's easy because you can just take this call and how many French speakers do we have? Well, exclude me, please, but still we have enough, right? Yes. I don't know what you're uh, talking about. Oh, we, we have Google. Oh, that's <laughs> perfect French speaker, isn't it? <laughs> well, not exactly. Uh, Google has difficulties with French genders. I can assure you about that. Yes. Translate Google, see me, Google see me as a male developer, so <laughs> I have tried on Twitter. Anyway. <laughs> okay. So yeah. Anyway, uh, I think that just putting uh, suggested uh, reviewers here would be the best approach uh, because it's again it's easier. Uh, you just put them. And then uh, we can figure out a more complicated process if we ever decide to do so. And I commit to be a review uh, for Russian language if needed and for French.
And I'm I'm stop sharing because it's time for guava. <laughs> I think. Okay. Yeah, uh, one topic I would like to discuss later is the joining and conclusive naming initiative as official member. Uh, but yeah, I will rather start in the, in the developer mailing list because it's a quite important topic. Uh, and I think that the participants on this call, we already discussed it briefly and there was no opposition at least. Uh, so maybe I will start in the developer list uh, right away uh, to save everyone's time. Uh, 